Welcome to Grading 103. This is part three of our counterfeit detection series, and today we'll take a look at dollars and commems. First off, a bit of introduction on our techniques. Counterfeit detection is a very uh, complex and detailed area. PCGS identifies two major types of counterfeits. One is the struck or cast counterfeits, where the entire coin is uh, fake. The second is uh, an altered coin where a, a genuine coin has been uh, altered, had changes made, usually either to the date, uh, the mint mark, or some uh, diagnostic for a variety. Uh, for most struck counterfeits, obviously numerous uh, different dyes exist, so we must keep track of those. And uh, many styles of alterations have been done to dates and mint marks, so the whole uh, area is very deceptive. Uh, the purpose of this short course is not to enable you to distinguish every counterfeit coin you might encounter, but simply to familiarize you with the techniques used by the experts and a few uh, tips of things that we look for on uh, certain coins. Let's start with a $17.99. Uh, these are very popular, being uh, America's largest silver coin. Uh, this is a genuine example. And take a look here at this struck counterfeit. You can see that it's lacking any sort of luster. It looks uh, very gray and matte looking. And if you take a closer look, check that depression in that R in Liberty. That was characteristic of the die used to strike it. And that's going to appear on every counterfeit struck from that die. So that's one thing we look for is some irregularity in the lettering or um, the devices. This is another struck counterfeit. Uh, you can see the surface is very porous. That's not typical of genuine coins, uh, especially silver coins. You see it on copper. But uh, this porosity on a silver coin is very unusual. And uh, you can see the tiny uh, little depressions and the blurry devices overall. This is a fairly low quality effort. Here's a genuine 1893S dollar. As you all probably know, 93S is a very key date and consequently it's a target of counterfeiters. One thing to look for in a genuine 93S are the sort of the rabbit ears in the R, if you see those uh, two little depressions right there. And uh, that die line in the T of Liberty is extremely diagnostic. That's one thing that you always want to keep an eye out for when you're looking, for, looking at a 93S dollar. Also on the mint mark, you want to notice the balanced S with the parallel serifs. You see both the serifs are perfectly uh, lined up vertically. Now here's a counterfeit 93S dollar. This one has an added mint mark. The diagnostics are not present. You don't see that line in the T nor the little rabbit ears in the base of the R. So that's one tip that it's uh, not genuine. And second of all, you see that S has a very strange shape. It's very thick in the middle. And those serifs, especially that upper serif, you see it's tilting to the left a little bit. So it's not completely vertical. So that, once again, that strange fat looking S and the serif should be a tip off to the, that this is a, uh, not a genuine coin. Here's a 94P dollar. This is a genuine example, of course. While not as rare as a 93S, it's still a better date. And uh, the genuine uh, 93S has a raised die line in the area above the uh, shaft. If you see sort of between the eagle's talons and the base of the uh, leg here in that area, that center area, you see a few little light raised lines. Also, there's a die line in the right foot of the R of Liberty, sort of similar to what we saw in the T on that uh, 93S. Here's a counterfeit uh, $94. This one uh, has an altered date. And uh, if you look at that 9, that's your first tip that something's a little wrong. It doesn't quite look shaped right, and it just has that aura of having some look done around that uh, digit. You see you can compare the uh, fake with the genuine, and uh, you see that that 9 is, uh, looks to be tilted a little bit funny and uh, there seems to be a little bit of work that's gone on right around that base of that date. So that's one thing uh, you want to be very careful of. Here's a trade dollar. This is an 1874. Uh, this is a genuine uh, example. Note the even uniform letters in the motto. Very clean, very crisp, all in a perfect line. Here is a struck counterfeit. Now this was not altered. This was uh, completely struck from um, fabricated dies. 
And once again, you want to take a look at the uh, In God We Trust here. And uh, you see sort of the letters are irregular. You see how big that U is right there. Uh, much bigger than the R or the S. That's a sure sign of a uh, bad coin. Also, you want to look at the rough fields. You see the little depressions and problems in the fields like that. That whole thing just doesn't look right at all. Moving on to commemoratives. Um, here is a 1936 Cincinnati. Commemoratives, obviously, are uh, very, very collectible, especially in high grade. This is an extremely high grade example of one and would, would be worth quite a bit of money. You see that in the hair, it's very clean. There's no strange depressions or any problems like that. Here is a counterfeit uh, 1936 Cincinnati. And uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, depressions in the hair. Right up here, right above the uh, part in the hair, you see these two little digs. And if you look really carefully, you can see they're not really gouges from any sort of handling or anything. They just sort of look like complete depressions. And you'll see those two depressions in the same place every time on these counterfeits. Here's a Hawaiian. Uh, they often come uh, very attractively toned. A lot of gold toning you see on Hawaiians. This is a genuine one. And um, this one here is counterfeit. And uh, let's see what we want to look for there. On two separate counterfeits, the first has depressions in the wave by the A in America. If you see that uh, little depression here, uh, right above, uh, right to the right of the A, that's one thing to look for. And the second uh, has a little spike coming out of the neck. Once again, you see that's a raised portion of metal, so it was a depression in the die that caused that. So that certainly didn't come from handling or circulation. Here's a 1921 Missouri. That's obviously one of the better commemoratives. This one here is a counterfeit. And uh, one thing we look for is sort of that roughness in the fields. You see the uh, polishing of the die caused some depressions in the die, which resulted in little raised lines all over the uh, coin. And uh, the proof-like surfaces, which you normally don't see on a uh, genuine Missouri. Here's a 1937 Antietam counterfeit. And let's see what we're looking at there is uh, a couple depressions uh, in the lower upright of the D and two on General Lee's cheek. You see once again these depressions. You see that and you see this little mark on the T in the uh, upper portion there. And once again these uh, characteristics and diagnostics would appear on multiple coins, which is one of the ways that we're able to identify uh, counterfeits like that. And the reverse has some depressions in the arches of the bridge. Here's a 15S pan pack. Here's a genuine example, beautifully toned. We want to look for some strong die polishing lines around the date, which uh, you see on genuine pan packs. Here's a counterfeit. The uh, luster right off the bat looks a little funny. And um, you see some depressions with uh, proof-like fields. So. Um, that's one thing that we want to look for there. Now, once again, to reiterate, your purpose was not to show you every possible counterfeit die. That would take many, many, many years. However, we hope you've gained a little insight into the general appearance of what some struck fakes look like, some telltale signs of fake mint marks, both shape and position, and some of the appearances of altered dates. Remember that becoming an expert counterfeit detector is uh, really a lifetime work and is an ongoing process. New counterfeits are created almost daily. So a short video is not going to teach you to become a counterfeit expert, but hopefully it'll give you a little bit of understanding of how we go about looking for counterfeits and some of the things we look for. We'll see you next time.